So up next, we have a panel from NASA. Panelists should assemble. Um, I think I'm going to let them introduce uh, themselves and or each other. So while we're doing the hookup and setup, we can get started because there are four of us. So we'll do a little tag teaming. Um, this is a panel on how to work with NASA. And if we knew how to do that, you know. So it's, it's sometimes easy and sometimes hard to work with NASA. But we can talk about what we do. And um, the International Space Apps Challenge, which is why you're here, is one of the ways that you get to work with NASA. Um, I'm Beth Beck. I'm in the Office of Chief Information Officer, which all three of us are. Um, and I do open innovation. And open data is one of the mandates. We talked about it yesterday. It's one of the mandates that we have federally that we're supposed, every federal agency is supposed to take our treasure troves of data and make them um, available to the public. Now, NASA already does this because it's what we're, it's in our DNA. So all of our research and discoveries, we do make them available to the public. Um, the open data mandate is there's a little bit more to it and we have metadata and, and all the good things that Jason will talk about, about how we actually free our data in the new machine readable forms. Um, but this data, one of our mandates is to spur innovation through the data. And so the International Space Apps Challenge is one of the programs we're doing to let the public engage with our data and to actually create your own innovations. Um, so you're able to, we can't send everyone into space. Not everyone gets to be Katie Coleman and go into space. So one of the things that we try to do at NASA is to give the people on Earth a way to touch what we do. And so there's lots of different programs where you can do that. And we can talk about space art. And there's so many different ways to do that. And the digital art, I'm not sure that we've heard someone, but it's something we're talking about having our first digital artist. But if you know of one, let me know, because um, I want to talk to them. Um, so just as a quick, we're going to all introduce you know, ourselves. But I just wanted to let you know that this is working with NASA through these programs is the best way to touch that. You just heard with the cases program, if you want to put an experiment in space, you know, the companies, that's a vehicle. Um, we've got a lot of student um, activities and programs. That's a vehicle. If you can intern uh, for free, I always tell people, if you can intern for free, do it. Because people like to see. If it, I know that if I've had someone work with me and they do a really good job, I'm going to try to figure out a way to bring them in, you know, through another route. So um, everyone needs to make money, and I know if you can sleep on someone's couch for six months or three months or something and, and do an internship with that, we do have formal internships, but not enough to go around. So open data, though, is the game that we play that we're here to talk to you about, and I will pass it on, and we can answer any questions or even pass it back and forth once we've done this. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Eldora Valentine, and I am the communications officer in the office of the chief information officer. Um, primarily, um, I handle um, outreach and communications for events like this. Um, I work for the CIO, who is Larry Sweet, and um, we handle a lot of uh, media inquiries and so forth. Um, I work with the media quite a bit. Um, we also um, I maintain the website for um, the CIO's office as well. So um, any type of internal communications. I also work with um, our 10 NASA centers, and um, you know we uh, strategize and coordinate to make sure that all the communications that's going out internally in regards to IT is on the same page, if you will. And we work very closely with our public affairs office as well. Thank you. So my name is Jason Dooley, and I work uh, with Beth in the Open Innovation Team. And uh, she's correct, we do open data as one of the things we do. Um, so we kind of have a bunch of stuff. So open innovation is our theme, and there's various ways we attack that. Uh, we do it through open source software. So we have a few web um, presence um, worth mentioning. One is our GitHub. Uh, or NASA organization. So please go there and check that out. Uh, there's a lot of open source software. And we encourage, one of the, the functions that we do is we encourage developers from across the agency, contractors and civil servants, to uh, promote their software to open source and have other people like yourselves make it better um, it, through uh, the whole development innovation um, process. So we have a, some more sites. Uh, we have a blog platform that our team blogs on, which has some good stuff. And additionally, 
Correct, open.nasa.gov, uh, thank you. And um, the other site you've been hearing a lot about is uh, that our data portal, uh, data.nasa.gov. That was started in 2011, I believe, and it's been um, kind of uh, in transition since. Um, we've recently uh, built on a, a new site, uh, which has um, pretty much all of our NASA data. There's always more we're putting in. In fact, when we get back, we're gonna be putting more data links into there. And um, we're, we're really hoping that uh, folks in this uh, conference will, will uh, tell us what they like about it and how we can make it better. Um, so, thank you. All right, well I guess you've heard the ongoing theme is open innovation and I'm Gladys Henderson. I got the wonderful opportunity to work with the Office of Chief Technologist for a year. So I am working with them in the area of prizes and challenges. And that's when we need you, the public, to partner with NASA because we understand the power of the crowd and the intelligence and the energy and also just the wealth of information that the crowd has. So what we do is that we, we work with our, with our um, teams at NASA to d uh, develop uh, missions, well, to develop challenges that meet the mission of NASA. And then we reach out to the crowd or to the public to deter, to, for you to help us solve those problems. And I would hope that I get an opportunity to kind of step you through that a little bit more. All right, uh, can I do that now or you wanna? All right, so I am going to. Wait, while she does that, I always have to have my little plug. Jason is our data emperor. So you can just put that down. You think, oh, that's the title we're giving here is him as the data emperor. And he, so he blushes when I say that. But it, all the data sets that we are making available, he's got to put his hands on them and put them in a new format and send them through. And it's just, it's an overwhelming job. Um, but exciting and thrilling. Back to you. All right, thank you. OK. One thing I do like to start off with is just to kind of give you the vision of uh, what the prize group or the challenge, prizes and challenges group look at as our vision. And it's to effectively harness the expertise, ingenuity, and the creative. Can you hear me? I gotta, I've got to speak into the microphone. I can't see the screen. I thought I was being better to look at the screen here, but it's so tiny. Um, of the individual members of the public, in achieving NASA's strategic goals. So what do we, we, what do we have here? The challenges that NASA is facing is uh, global warming, uh, detecting asteroids that threaten the Earth, expanding our explos explos exploration. So there's just a number of, would it be better to? OK, we'll use this one. Um, there's a technology explosion, and I guess we all realize that, we understand that, and we've embraced that. And that explosion um, has just a whole lot of different components on it. One thing that we look at is the Moore's Law. Now, every, even though everybody doesn't embrace the title of the Moore's Law, we all embrace and understand what its effect is, is that um, every two years, and, and the way we like to put it is that when you open up your computer, by the time you get it out the box, it's now, it's now obsolete. So now you need a new computer to just keep up with the technology. And that's what we're all experiencing. The data growth, it's an enormous amount of data that we've now got to figure out how to analyze that data, how to utilize it, and what to do with it. And, and that's where we need to take advantage of not only the technology explosion, but we need to understand how we stay current with everything. Now, what we've been doing is been, we've been working with experts. And so we all understand that the experts are those, our uh, contractors, our NASA engineers, our scientists, those are the experts that we've all been working with. But with innovation and what is happening in our uh, data technology explosion, we understand that now we have to do something a lot more innovative. And so that's where we come in with prizes, challenges, and crowdsourcing. 
So what I'm going to take you to right now is a real quick video that's going to just explain that for one, it's a one minute video. Ah, so you so while she's doing favorite. that, also challenges, we can, the, the, so we have challenges at NASA. The International Space Challenge is one of the many challenges that we have. And what uh, Gladys is doing is that her office is coordinating all the, trying to coordinate all the challenges we have. And some actually have prizes attached. And what she's going to show you at some point is her uh, website called NASA Solve. It's not her. It's the NASA website. It's called NASA Solve. If you're looking for challenges that you want to engage in, that is one place where you can go where we're trying to keep them all cataloged. So, um, and they're, they come at different times of the year. Oh, there you go. Problems related to NASA's mission in science, aeronautics, space technology, and human exploration and operations. Whether you do it for the prizes, to gain recognition, to develop into a space-related company, or for the pure joy of contributing to our future and our understanding of the universe around us, we're calling on you to be a NASA solver. At NASA, we take on big problems every day, such as how did the universe begin? How can humans safely live and work in space? Are we alone in the universe? NASA has engaged individuals in a variety of different types of problem-solving activities, such as developing and demonstrating super-fuel-efficient aircraft, determining if it was possible to improve the positions of solar panels on the International Space Station, to harness even more of the sun's energy as it revolves around the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour, bringing together thousands of hackers, makers, and space enthusiasts to design innovative solutions for global challenges in software development, citizen science, and hardware, developing and demonstrating innovative robotic mining and excavation concepts from university students, discovering the birthplace of planets in never-before-seen data with citizen scientists. Since 2005, participants have received many types of awards for contributing to NASA challenges, prizes, and crowdsourcing activities. Millions of dollars have been made available. In addition to awards like rocket launch viewing attendance, special access tours at NASA facilities, and student awards and recognitions, more than 150,000 individuals and 1,800 teams have participated and tens of thousands of dollars worth of scholarships have been given out since 2005. There are lots of ways you can get involved. There are a variety of problems to solve, and the challenges aren't limited to scientists and engineers. Whether you're a designer, communicator, programmer, or storyteller, you can be a solver. Check out the current opportunities to participate at www.nasa.gov solve. Connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. Okay, so with that said, I think that just pretty much sums up everything. We need you to help us solve those tough problems that NASA has. And you can actually do that um, and find out what those opportunities are by going to our website. And even though I took a little bit advantage of my panel here, the reason why I was even asked to even come on here is to just talk about our website and make sure that the public understands that we have a website that's like a one-stop shop. And the exciting thing about the website is that it gets over um, 30,000 hits uh, a, a, a week. So we know that persons are actually going out there and looking at it and becoming involved in our website. So I'm just going to take you and step you through it for about 30 seconds, the website, to give you some ideas of what types of challenges we have. and how you too can start getting involved. Well, here's our website. So when you go there, um, you can uh, look on the left-hand side here, and there's lots of videos, like the one you just saw, or videos about different challenges that have happened, or things that are going on in the NASA community. So on the left-hand side here, uh, underneath where it says the Facebook and the Twitter, you can actually see uh, various videos. And then on the right hand, and I'm looking at my right hand, so I'm hoping we have the same uh, uh, correlations of uh, direction here. You can actually take a look at, and they give you just how do you become involved with SOLVE? What is it that you need to do? And just how does it work? And then the most important part of SOLVE is to get involved. And so you can actually engage in the challenges and understand what all our challenges are that we have in our NASA community. And so all the, the current challenges are listed on the website here. 
and you can go to each and every individual challenge, take a look at it, and see if this is a challenge that you're interested in. Now, the great news is that uh, in April of the May time frame, and I'm a little hesitant about giving out dates, but we're modifying the website, and you're going to have a different feel for it. So it's going to be a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more click, and I can get to where I need to get to. So for now, uh, this is what you'll be working, which which just has been just as effective. So. One of the, the, the current challenges that we have out now is the Cube Quest challenge. And that challenge is very, very, very exciting right now because it's one of the, um, uh, the purse prize is one of the highest ones we've had. It has a purse prize of over $5 million. And you can go and read more information about um, that particular challenge. Now, one question that we get on a regular and a constant basis is, do you really give out the money? Are there really success stories behind these challenges? Uh, do people really come up with ideas that will benefit NASA and its mission? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And you've heard so many of them just here with the panel. Katie's told you about the glove challenge that they had where they needed to, to when you're out there in the, on the space station or you're working on the, the spacecraft, you need to have a uh, so, so, so that you can move your fingers a little bit more freely. And they actually put out a challenge for that and got a, um, uh, I believe what Katie was saying was it was actually a uh, costume designer that helped with that. A ah. Oh, okay, so he was a sail maker, like bolt sails and et cetera. So that was just pretty interesting. So that lets you know that the winners, oh my gosh, is that you? Yeah, Peter Homer, uh, Homer. Okay, great. He's actually a, a satellite or a, yeah, a satellite Before engineer. Before he was a sailmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. 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 So Did welcome. You, uh, Congratulations. Oh sure. Yeah. So um, I actually participated in the 2007 and 2009 astronaut glove competition, and I'm speaking at 12:30, so I'll go in depth uh, about that. Fantastic. So, fantastic. I, I didn't mean to interrupt here. No, no, I, I beautiful. That and see, once again, we can prove that we do have winners of our challenges. <laughs> and not only, not only was he simply a winner, but that technology is being utilized with our gloves. So, w job well done. Job well done. Um, well, I'm basically, I think you got the gist, and I'm not going to take you, this is not my presentation, so I am going to sit down here, but the, the whole gist of it is that NASA Solve has opportunities for us to partner with our public, because you are a partner in this with us in open innovation, and we need your expertise. And let me clarify just real quickly, and, we'll, and we can open up to questions, but there's a difference between some of the, the we have procurement prizes and prizes that have money. And they have kind of different authorities. The International Space Apps Challenge is a um, is a no exchange of funds prize. So that is the open innovations. We're giving you our data. Because it's an open source challenge, your solution is yours and ours and everyone's because it's open source. So you can take it to market. If we wanted to build on it, we could take it to market. Anyone could, depending on your open source license. But we do. Um, require them to be built on an open source license. So it's a little bit of a different challenge because this is more of a uh, putting innovation out in the community and giving everyone an equal opportunity to, to make success happen. So that's a little bit different uh, in space apps. The other question we always get for space apps is what are you doing with our solutions? The hundreds of solutions that will come out of this week, maybe you know thousands that come out of this weekend, uh, we do look at them for the global prizes. The global prize is you um, will come to you if at your own expense. Yay, government. Uh, we will uh, provide an opportunity for you to come to a launch, and we'll put you on the bus. You know, we'll host you when you're there. You know, you get yourself there, and then we make it the best experience as possible. So that's that's the, the global prize for this. Um, but as far as us using all of the solutions, that's the issue that we're still working on. We're tr trying to get better on the curation back, the infusion back into NASA, how we take your great ideas. We're still working on that. It's a little bit different from a procurement where we're going to put you on contract and pay for it. So it's a different, so there's all kinds of different challenges. You guys want to add anything or open it up? Yes, so perfect. All right, questions? Okay. I think we have time for maybe two, two maybe three questions for the panel. 
Anyone? Or were questions already asked while I was out of the room or something? Oh, got in the front. Um, so a lot of the basis of the whole SOLVE program, in my view, is using human-centered design in the way that NASA is trying to solve problems. Um, how do you see that integrated across the agency? Is that, uh, is that a correct assumption? And how do you see that philosophy integrated in the agency's programming? I can jump in one, You can because you're running the program. but. Um, not everyone loves challenges at NASA um, because we hire engineers and scientists who have all their life wanted to come and solve the problems of the universe. And not everyone's thrilled about letting you solve it too. But that's a culture thing. So it's a culture even in the government. It's a culture in bureaucracy. We are a bureaucracy. Um, we're a federal government bureaucracy with really innovative people in it. So it's this really kind of strange mix. But, but the challenge is what, um, what Gladys is doing is helping even the in-reach at NASA to get other NASA, and we just had a meeting last week about how do we get more NASA organizations who want to offer up some cool stuff for you guys to solve. So it, it's a cultural issue, but it's growing. And it is absolutely growing. And I think the fire is about to take off and it's sparking in persons. It's slow. It's, it, well, okay, maybe it's a flicker. But it, 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 is, it is starting. It's, it's, <laughs> but, um, and I'm going to give uh, um, a kudos to Jen Gustetic, whose place I'm taking for a temporary time while she's over. The White House has snatched her up because they saw what great things she was doing in that world. But um, we, we do. First place we go and look is NASA at work. We look internal to NASA because we realize we have experts, we have geniuses working right there at NASA. And so we actually do challenges to, to our persons at work. And then we go off and we start looking at the teams to develop those challenges where they can reach out. And it is a slow process, but the more successes we have, the better it's becoming. And we have a numerous, and if you go to our success block, you will see that there are a number of successes that we've had that's actually contributing to NASA's mission instead of being a, a feel-good, warm fuzzy. Any other questions? If we don't have questions, can we give uh, Jason just, oh, go ahead. We might have one over here. In between, if there's a moment, we can talk about the software sharing, which is, New. I know that NASA does a lot of other things than you know the general public might understand. For example, um, I, I work in the commercial drone space, and I know that we've worked with NASA on integrating drones into the sky. Like, how do you best solve that type of problem? And I was wondering if Solve could actually get some good ideas from the public on that front. Let's talk. And, and the reason I'm saying that what we do is that we reach out and we can develop. We have um, Colsey. Uh, the collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, we have a. We, Center I, I for was, Collaborative Excellence something. There's okay. that, yeah. And their, their whole task is to work with our persons out at NASA or anyone who has a great idea so that we can put it out there and crowdsource but it. But there is potentially or has been in the last few years a discussion about a centennial prize challenge for exactly that. And so it was like, how do you have the drone space and the airspace and how do we keep. You know, so it's an aeronautics challenge of how do we keep the airways safe? And we actually, last year, tried to kind of ride off of it and have some of those challenges be part of space apps. Um, I don't know exactly where. It, I think it's still in discussion and hasn't been made formal. So you didn't hear it from me if we have it. Well, let's talk. Any other questions? I think. Is that a wrap? Yes? Okay. Do you guys have something else you want to say? Or? Well, I just wanted one thing, just that we have the software sharing, which is kind of a new thing. If you had two seconds to talk about how, what we're trying to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so what Beth's saying is, uh, I kind of touched on it earlier. Um, we, we're trying to, to use GitHub as a common platform. Obviously, any uh, code sharing paradigm that you would like to use is fair game. I mean, having it out there on the internet is, is wonderful. Um, but. Uh, Please uh, do a couple things. One, uh, if you have a cool project, uh, send it to um, our NASA list that's on that site. And there's another site I'll mention, code.nasa.gov, 
which lists all the NASA open source. Uh, so at the top, there's a filter that you could type in keywords. Uh, code, like source code, but C-O-D-E dot NASA dot gov. Um, yeah. and, and essentially that's uh, got uh, software projects that are spread out all over the internet on uh, GitHub, on SourceForge, and some NASA open source sites. Um, so that, I think that would be wonderful um, there. The other one I'll mention is there, uh, as you look at NASA, a, a lot of folks here are looking at data on sites, and there's a ton of data. It's like all the stuff you have in your garage, you throw a bunch of stuff in your garage, and then some point when you want to find that one type of bolt, you know you have it, but now you got to go find it. So our NASA sites are a lot like that. So there are some really good data sets that have like telnet interfaces and folks like you want to call them through HTTP. So um, some other stuff that would be cool is if you could wrap those and make APIs for those and send them to me and I can get you working for me, that'd be awesome. So, all right, thank you.